Jai Hare Krishna and we are back with the topmost yoga system by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and we are on page 19. You may want Krishna as your lover or as your son. You may want Krishna as your friend. You may want Krishna as your master. You may want Krishna as the supreme sublime. These five different kinds of direct relationship with Krishna are called devotion or bhakti. They entail no material profit. The concept of accepting God as a son is superior to the concept of accepting God as a father. There is a distinction. The relationship between father and son is that the son wants to take something from the father. The father's relationship with the son is that the father always wants to give something to the son. Therefore, the relationship with God or Krishna as son is better than the relationship with Krishna by one who thinks, if I accept God as my father, then my business will be to ask for my necessities from the father. But if I become the father of Krishna, then from the very beginning of his childhood, my business will be to serve him. The father is the parent of the child from the very beginning of his birth. Therefore, the concept of this relationship of Vasudev and Devaki is sublime. Krishna's foster mother Yashoda is thinking, if I do not feed Krishna sumptuously, he will die. She forgets that Krishna is the Supreme Lord, that He is sustaining the three worlds. She forgets that only one Lord is supplying the necessities of all the living beings, all the living entities. This same Personality of Godhead has become the son of Yashoda, and she is thinking, if I do not feed him nicely, if I do not feed him nicely, he will die. This is love. She has forgotten that it is the Supreme Personality of Godhead who has appeared before her as a little child. This relationship of attachment is very sublime. It requires time to understand, but there is a position where instead of asking, Oh God, please give us our daily bread, you can instead think that God will die if you do not supply bread to Him. This is the ecstasy of extreme love. There is such a relationship between Krishna and his devotee Radharani, the greatest devotee, the greatest lover of Krishna. Mother Yashoda is his lover as a parent. Sudama is his lover as a friend. Arjuna also as a friend. There are millions and billions of different kinds of direct devotees of Krishna. So, the yoga systems are described here lead to bhakti yoga. And bhakti yoga can be practiced by persons who have developed attachment to Krishna. Others cannot practice it. And if anyone is able to develop that attachment, the relationship will be that he will understand God, Krishna, perfectly. However, we may try to understand God by our different theories or speculations. It is still a difficult job. We may say that we have understood God, but it is not possible to understand Him as He is because we have limited senses and He is unlimited. It is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam that our senses are imperfect, all of them. We cannot understand even the material world perfectly. You have seen so many planets and stars in the sky at night, but you do not know what they are. You do not even know what the moon planet is, though men have been trying for so many years to go there in Sputniks. Even this one planet, Earth, we do not know what varieties there are even on this planet. If you go to the sea, to the sky, your perception is limited. Our knowledge is therefore always imperfect. On that we must agree. 
If we foolishly think that we have acquired all forms of knowledge and we have advanced in science, this is another foolishness. It is not possible. And when it is not possible to understand even the material things which we see daily with our eyes, what can we say of the spiritual world and Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead? He is the supreme spiritual form and it is not possible to understand him by our limited senses. Then why are we bothering so much for Krishna consciousness if it is not possible? If these imperfect senses cannot realize Krishna as he is? The answer is that if you become submissive, if you develop the spiritual attitude of following Krishna, and if you are as a servant or as a friend or as a parent or as a lover, if you begin to give service to the Supreme Lord, then you can begin to know Him. Your service begins with the tongue. How? By the tongue you can chant Hare Krishna and by the tongue you can taste Krishna Prasadam, spiritual food. So the beginning of the process is very nice. You can chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And whenever a prasadam is offered to you by Krishna, by his kindness, you accept it. The result will be that if you become submissive and if you begin the service chanting and eating prasadam, Krishna will reveal himself before you. You can't understand Krishna by speculation. That is not possible because your senses are imperfect. But if you begin this process of service, then it will be possible. One day Krishna will reveal himself to you. I am like this. Just as Krishna is revealing to Arjuna. Arjuna is a devotee and he is submissive. And he is in contact with Krishna as a friend. Therefore. Krishna is revealing to him. The Bhagavad Gita was spoken to Arjuna, not to any Vedantist philosophical speculator. In the beginning of the fourth chapter, you will note that Krishna says, I am speaking to you that ancient system of yoga. It is stated unto you. Arjuna was a Kshatriya, a fighter. He was a householder, not even a sannyasi, not a renouncer. But these are not qualifications to understand Krishna. Suppose I say I have become a sannyasi mendicant. This is not a qualification that I can now understand Krishna. Then what is the qualification? This, one who has developed the service spirit with love and devotion can understand me. No other, not the big scholars and mental speculators but a child can understand Krishna if he has full faith in him. So faith and devotion qualify one. Simply by such faith and service, you will understand that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Just as we are preaching Krishna Consciousness, we are not wasting your time or our time because we are in full faith that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Theoretically or practically, you should accept Krishna as the Supreme Person. Theoretically, there is the revealed scripture. If you will understand from the Vedic literature, from the great devotees in the past and in the present. For the present, there is Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is the great authority. None is the greater. He was mad after Krishna. And then after him, his six disciples, the Goswamis, have left us an immensely valuable literature, especially Jiva Goswami. They have written volumes on Krishna. So, under disciplic succession, we have come to this point. And if you like past history, then go back a long, long time to Vyasadev. He is known to have written the Srimad Bhagavatam and other literature on Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam is nothing but a description of Krishna. Vyasa is also the writer of Bhagavad Gita. The Gita was spoken by Krishna and noted down by Vyasadeva, 
who put this Gita into the Mahabharata. So Vyasadeva accepts Krishna as the Supreme Person. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, he has given the description of the different incarnations. There are 25 of them. And in the conclusion, he says that the descriptions that are given of different incarnations are all parts of the representations of God. But Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead himself. He is not part, but 100%, 100% God. So there is the evidence of authority. And practically, practically if we believe the Shastras, the scriptures, then we can see who can be more powerful than Krishna. Who can be more beautiful than Krishna? Who can be more famous than Krishna? Krishna appeared 5,000 years ago, but his knowledge, which he gave in the form of the Srimad Bhagavatam, is still worshipped. It is worshipped not only by the Hindus or the Indians, but is read all over the world. In your country, there are at least 50 different editions of the Bhagavad Gita, written by a different man. Similarly, in England, in Germany, in France, in all other countries, you will find hundreds of editions of the Gita. So, who can be more famous? Who can be more famous? There are many other evidences, if you believe in Shastra. Krishna married 16,108 wives. And he provided each one of them with a big palace. Each one of them had 10 children. And from the ten children, there were many other children born. So we have the evidence of revealed scriptures. And in the Brahma Samhita also, Krishna is accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is a very old book, supposed to have been written by Brahma, the first living being in the universe. In the Brahma Samhita, it is said, Ishvara Parama Krishna. Ishvara means God. There are many gods. It is said that there are so many demigods and there is the Supreme Lord. So Brahma Samhita says Ishvara Parama Krishna. He is the God of all gods. Ishvara Parama Krishna and then Satchit Ananda Vigraha. And his body is eternal and full of bliss and knowledge. And the next, Anadi, he has no beginning. He is the beginning of everyone. Anadir Adir Govinda. Go means senses. Go means cow. And go means land. land. So he is the proprietor of all land. He is the proprietor of all cows. And he is the creator of all senses. We are after sense pleasure, but our perfection of sense pleasure can be achieved only when we reciprocate our pleasure with Krishna. Therefore, his name is Govinda, the supreme original personality of Godhead. The same personality of Godhead personally spoke about himself to Arjuna in the Gita. How can you say that somebody, by his thinking, by speculation, can say something about God that is more important than what is being said by Krishna himself. It is not possible. No one can speak better than Krishna about God because God himself is speaking. If you speak about yourself personally, who can say more than you? So if you have faith, if you believe theoretically or practically in Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then, by the speeches that are delivered by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, you can understand God. There is no difficulty. And if you believe Krishna, then the result will be that you can understand God, how He is working, how His energies are acting, how He is manifesting, what is this material world, what is the spiritual world, what are the living creatures? What is their relationship? So many things are to be found in God's literature. The whole Vedic literature, 
deals with three things. The first is your relationship with God. Then next, after you understand your relationship with God, you can act in that way. Just as a man or woman may not be related, but as soon as the relationship is established, then one is husband and the other is wife, then the dealings begin. Once they understand their relationship with God, people generally believe that God is the Father, and son's business is to ask Father for whatever he needs. But that is really a lesser relationship. If you understand God perfectly, then there are intimate relationships also. Your intimate relationship will be revealed when you are perfectly liberated. Each and every living creature has a particular relationship with God, but we have, for now, forgotten. When that relationship is revealed in the process of devotional activities or Krishna consciousness, you will know that that is the perfection of your life. Krishna consciousness is a great science. It is not a sentimental speculation regarding love. It is based on scientific propositions described in the Bhagavad Gita, in the Vedas and in the Brahma Samhita. And it is accepted by authorities like Lord Chaitanya, Ramanuja Acharya, Madhava Acharya, Narada, Asita, Vyasa. There are so many authorities. Krishna consciousness is not an ordinary love-making or money-making business. It is reality. And if you stick to it seriously, your life will be perfect. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, after giving up this body, one who knows me in truth does not come back again to this material world to accept a material body. Then what happens to him? He goes to Krishna, back home, back to Godhead. This Krishna consciousness movement is directly giving people understanding of Krishna. We are giving knowledge of Krishna based on these authorized scriptures, Bhagavad Gita and the Vedas. Veda means knowledge, and Vedanta means the ultimate end of knowledge. What is that ultimate end of knowledge? That is Krishna. Vedaishya Sarvairaham Eva Vedya. By knowing all the Vedas, the ultimate conclusion should be Krishna. This conclusion comes after many, many births. After concluding, after culturing knowledge, for many, many births, when one actually becomes wise, then he surrenders unto Krishna. How can he surrender? He knows that Vasudev Krishna is everything. Whatever we see is simply a manifestation of the energy of Vasudev. One must be convinced on this point, and then he becomes a devotee. Krishna therefore advises that whether you understand or not, simply surrender to him. What Krishna taught in the Bhagavad Gita, we are also teaching without different manufactured ideas. This is our Krishna consciousness movement. It is open to everyone, and the process is very simple. We have our centers. If you want to take advantage of this movement, you are welcome. You will be happy. Wait, wait, hold on just yet. Actually, there's an announcement because I added the link of the book where you can download or purchase and read online in the description. So if you're interested, it's right there waiting for you. So thank you for tuning in to Shravanam Diaries and we'll see you next time. Hare Krishna.